Linked relationships between tables is perhaps one of the most foundational concepts that we have within no code. And it's essential for so many of the fields we have that are dependent on it. Things like lookups, rollups, counts, and even formulas. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from automationhelpers.com. And this video is going to be part of a series where we dig into the architecture of no code. What we've heard from a lot of our clients is, we started down this path of not knowing what we were building because no code is so flexible. So if you've been wanting to get into the why, why do we build things this way and how do we build them, this is gonna be the perfect series for you. Now this video will be part of a free course that we're hosting. So if you're interested in that, the sign up link is going to be in the description below. So first of all, what do we mean at a high level between relationships between tables before we even talk about the field itself? So let's think through some examples. We have tasks that are a part of projects. We need to complete those tasks that are a part of that overall project. Contacts and companies. We have contacts that work at those companies. Courses and lessons. Lessons need to be completed in order to finish a course. And customers and orders. Customers can be placing multiple orders with us. So you can hear in each of those examples, there's something that's relational about this in the first place, that these tables, these objects interact with one another. So let's take a look at an example through the lens of Airtable. Inside of Airtable, we've got multiple tables set up. Right now we're looking at contacts and companies. And the first thing that we're going to do is create a new field. Now I'm going to give this a name of company and my field type is linked to another record. You can see this is the first one listed. It's really important. We can click on this, which then reveals our list of different tables that we can choose from. In this case, we'll choose companies and we'll create our field. You'll notice that this box pops up for lookup fields. This can be really valuable, but we're going to skip this step for now. So now now you'll see there's a new field for company and we're able to choose from our existing list of companies. Let's take a look at a couple other things here. So when we were adding our field type, we could have searched for the table, in this case company, and it would automatically pop up with link to companies. So that's an easy option to get started as well. I also want to point out that it doesn't matter which side of the relationship that we start on. So we were on the contacts record and we added a link to our company. And if we head over to our companies table, now yours might appear right away or it might be hidden, so you'll have to take a look, but it's automatically created the inverse side of that relationship for us. It's created a field for contacts. So it really doesn't matter where you begin. We could have easily started on the companies and added the contacts field, and then it would have created the inverse on this side. Now, one thing to talk about here is that the naming convention doesn't need to match the name of the table. So we're on companies and we're looking at contacts, but we could in fact describe this a different way. Maybe in this case, for this particular relationship, we want to refer to this as employees. These are the employees who work at this company. That doesn't change the fact that these people are called contacts. Back on our contacts table, let's say we want to review or edit the linked relationship that we have. The nice part is this is really easy to do inside of Airtable as opposed to other systems where once you create that relationship, you're kind of stuck. We can click on the drop down and edit field and you'll see that we have that link to companies and the title of that field, which we can relabel if we want to. But you'll see this option, which is really important. Do we want to allow linking to multiple records? This is where different types of relationships come into account. So if we're talking about contacts to companies and we say that there are multiple contacts, multiple people who work at one company, that's called a many to one relationship. It also could be referred to as an N to one relationship. And we could describe the inverse of these relationships, which could be one to many. So if we're talking about projects and tasks, for one project, a single project has multiple tasks one to many or one to n. We also could have many to many relationships or n to n. Maybe we say for our contacts and companies, these contacts are affiliates of companies and they actually work for multiple different companies. In that case, we'd want to say you could have many contacts associated with many companies. And finally, we could have one to one relationships, which is just simply one record linked to a single other record. So how does this manifest itself in the application? Well, contacts to companies, we talked about two different ways of doing this. We said that we could have many contacts to one company. That's kind of the standard setup for most CRMs. So in this case, we're saying allow linking to multiple records. And this we wouldn't want to be the case because we're saying we want multiple contacts to link to only a single company record. So we'd uncheck this option here and press save. Now on the company side, if we edit that relationship, 
we're okay to have that one company be associated with multiple contacts. So we'd want this toggled on. So let's take a look at what this looks like in practice. So Bruce Wayne is going to be the CEO of Wayne Enterprises, but Lucius Fox also works at Wayne Enterprises. So we'll have both of them checked here. Now we couldn't, because we defined the relationship, we couldn't add additional records. There's no option to be able to do that unless of course we were to X off this record and now add them to another single company. Let's fill out the companies for these other individuals. So here's Lex at LexCorp. And we've got Oliver Queen, who is at Queen Industries. Now let's see what this looks like on the inverse side, on the companies. And you can see this automatically created those relationships back the other way. So we can see that both Bruce Wayne and Lucius Fox work at Wayne Enterprises. We have Oliver Queen and Lex at their respective companies. So let's go back and tweak that relationship so we're fine with a many-to-many -many relationship. So now if we are on our contacts and we edit the field for our company, we can say we are okay to allow linking to multiple records. In this case, maybe Lucius has been moonlighting for Oliver Queen at Queen Industries. You can see we now have the option to add multiple values. So we can see multiple values selected for the company, and multiple values selected for the employees. So where would a one-to-one -one relationship come into play? Well, maybe we have contacts who are starting at our companies as employees. And as they get started, we want to have an onboarding record for them. So let's create a new table. We'll start from scratch and we'll call this onboarding. And then here we'll add a linked relationship. And this time it's going to be to the contacts. We won't allow multiple records. We'll add a field name of employee and we'll create that field. And then on the contact side, we've got our new hidden field of onboarding. And we'll want to make sure to edit the settings on this side to also say that we can't have multiple records. So in this case, each employee is going to have their own onboarding record. Let's say Oliver's just getting started at his company. And maybe we want to add a field for our start date. We can choose the date that he's starting. And maybe we want to edit our primary field. We can change this to a formula. And let's concatenate the employee's name, a hyphen, and a start date. We'll save that and confirm it. And now over on the contact side, when we reference that record, we can see here's our onboarding. Using our formula, we could clean up the date time formatting a little bit. Now you have the ability to create multiple relationships between the same exact tables. So we had contacts and companies, which we identified as employees, but we could create a new relationship here. And this one could be for the CEO. In this case, we're linking to a record. It's still going to be contacts. We'll only allow for one, and we'll create this field. So now we could go ahead and select that Bruce Wayne is the CEO. So we could have one linked relationship representing all of the employees at the company, and another one could be a many-to-one relationship. There's only one CEO, and so we can select that individual here as well. Now, because it automatically creates the fields on both sides, it can be a little bit confusing. You'll notice that we had company before, and now it automatically created companies. So that can be confusing if you don't label your fields right away. So I always recommend being as descriptive descriptive as you can when you're labeling those linked records. So in this case, we would relabel this. And in this case, we might refer to it as CEO of simply because it's much more descriptive than just the companies itself. Now, remember that those relationships get created on both sides. Well, what happens if we change our minds and we want to delete a field? So I go ahead and I delete this. Great, it's gone from our contact side. Well, what happens on the company side? Well, in this case, it turns it into a text field. So it has information that's there, but it no longer has that relationship. So this is now just plain text. It's no longer keeping it in sync with the actual contacts. Now, this is really just the starting point. There's so much more to learn from here, including what kinds of relationships we choose and when, and something called junction tables, which again is really fundamental to how we build out our applications. If you have any questions about your own Airtable or automation build, don't hesitate to reach out to automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.